Yellowstone supervolcano's magma reservoir is one of the biggest time bombs of the world. Every so often, the USGS Scientist Yellowstone Volcano Observatory announcements come out with new information, new findings. One recent one stated that the Yellowstone supervolcano was two and a half times bigger than what they originally thought it was. That it was stretching from Yellowstone Caldera and Yellowstone National Park all the way to the border of Mexico. That was one side of the diameter, that's the one radius, and the other radius goes up to Canada's Hudson Bay, for example. And to the uh, east, towards New York, New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia, and to the west, all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. That's how huge this thing is. Now, volcanic eruption in Yellowstone National Park could change the world as we know it, and of course, hundreds of thousands of people would be affected. Scientists have warned us of this. This is by John Austin on Express UK. The University of Utah is responsible for monitoring the seismic activity in Yellowstone. The researchers from the University of Utah claim research shows that if the volcanic national park across Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Utah, of course, went off, it would have worse effects than a nuclear winter, and it would dwarf all natural disasters of recent history. Xing Hua Huang and his colleagues at the University of Utah described it as one of the planet's biggest time bombs. So I guess here they would definitely agree with what Professor Michio Kako of City University, City College said that it's not uh, a yogi bear, it's a Godzilla waiting to awaken and erupt under Yellowstone. The park has always been known as hugely volcanic. Researchers say they have denounced the magma reserves underneath the park are much more prevalent than they ever thought. They say there is enough molten rock inside to fill the huge Grand Canyon, not 11 times, but 14 times. They reported in the latest Journal of Science discovering huge new magma reservoirs, and the Utah geologists also created the first 3D image of geothermal structures under Yellowstone after giving it a virtual CT scan. But Huang and his colleagues reassured mankind we're probably safe for now because the chances of an eruption happening there each year are the same as being struck by lightning, which is one in 700,000. He said, but when it does blow, it probably will change the whole world. If another large caldera forming eruption were to occur at Yellowstone, he says, its effects would be worldwide not only U.S., not only Northern Hemisphere, but worldwide. It would drastically shift the world's climate. And his team said uh, age-old eruptions at Yellowstone dwarfed more recent ones at St. Helens. That was the one that took place in 1980, which covered Washington State with ash, an ash bed the size of Lake Michigan back in 1980. It would also eclipsed Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines that happened in 1991, and it would also eclipse even Krakatoa, during which thousands lost their lives in the eruption of 1883. And people, you won't believe it, this, people 40 miles away had their eardrums ruptured because of the sonic boom the, clo the uh, closest record, they say, we have of the consequence of a Yellowstone eruption is Mount Tambora, which took place in Indonesia, and it blew in 1815, and that was um, an eruption so strong that they had 10,000 victims there. The 36 cubic meters of dust that it erupted into the atmosphere 
were reported to block out so much sunlight that there was no summer across the whole globe for the whole year. Can you imagine? No sunlight for the whole year. That means no planting, not enough food to eat, droughts, famine, livestock, uh, of course, losing livestock, losing, you, you lose basically, it's a, uh, it's a fight for survival. But evidence suggests much bigger eruptions have happened at Yellowstone and its far distant history. The caldera uh, crack, the, the crater in the park, as we know, is 40 miles wide in some places. It was left when a staggering uh, eruption of debris of 240 cubic miles flew into the air. This was about 300, uh, 630,000 years ago. And they estimate that around 2 million years back, that was a lot bigger, it was almost three times as much, it was 600 cubic miles of Earth's crust ejected upwards from Yellowstone. And even before that, 2 million years ago, a volcanic activity blew 600 cubic miles into the debris. The most recent event was in 2003, when the ground temperatures rose high enough to dry out the geysers. Can you imagine? The ground temperatures rose high enough to dry up the geysers and boil sap of the trees and just below ground was a 200 degree Fahrenheit park had to close. 200 degrees under the ground, that's boiling. Can you imagine walking around on boiling, boiling uh, soil? I mean, that uh, you can imagine the heat that it would be um, uh, radiating from the soil up to towards. It's just, uh, I had I had look at this. I went to buy a pair of shoes yesterday, and uh, the man at the store was from Venezuela. And I said, "Oh, you're having a lot of problems. That people there are, you know, are, are very poverty stricken and everything." He said, um, "Yeah, you know, it's uh, we have a lot of oil and all this. And we were talking about the resources, and he said that there's a lot of volcanoes around there." He said he lived in an area high up in a mountain where it was uh, very temperate. It was um, anywhere between 65, not, not more than 75, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And at one point in time, there were a few days, it was like they were like 100 Fahrenheit. That's because a volcano uh, in another country nearby blew. And they were getting all this heat from that volcanic eruption. Can you imagine? And this was his witnessing as to what uh, an eruption could do. So, of course they had to close. This was back in 2000, this was 15 years ago. Amazing. And uh, let's remember that they came out a couple of weeks ago with a, the news of a new thermal area that they have discovered west of the caldera, around between Turn Lake and uh, the caldera, and they have to go and uh, observe that, have a field trip to go see have a hands-on experience as to see what is that. Is that new geysers? Is it new fumaroles? Is it new mud pots? What is that exactly? It's deforming, it's hot, and uh, there are over 10,000 hydrothermal areas in Yellowstone National Park over the supervolcano, 10,000, and Yellowstone, as we know, has over 60% of the world's geysers. So, it uh, was hot enough back then that it dried out the geysers and boiled the trees of their liquids, of their sap. Amazing. So I'll leave a link below for you for this on uh, Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.